Hey ladies and jellyfish, women of all sizes, <laughs> welcome back to Ask Gears Videos. Today I am here with Cargo Mine. Hello. Baseball Sam 1. I just fought a gorilla in my backyard last night. I have so many traumatizing memories about it, but I'm here to say hello. And the ninja story. I can't follow that up. That was amazing. That was, that was fabulous. All right. Um, yeah, you guys are uh, talented. <clears throat> so today we are here to review uh, Truth or Square and compare it to the SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, which I have reviewed. So check that out in the description below. Anyway, how are you all guys doing today? Doing okay right now. Still yep. got the food in front of the river fight, but I'm good. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Today's been pretty uh, Only creepers are on my mind, so I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> All right. So, what do you guys think of uh, these episodes? Uh, Well, we got to talk about Trooper Square first. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, so let's just... So we're all on the same page. You guys all hate Truth or Square, right? Um, or at least mildly, actually, mildly dislike it. I have it. to say something. Yeah. Now I know it's not a good episode, but this was, I think, one of the first SpongeBob DVDs that I ever got. I think it was maybe the mm -hmm. second or third. Yeah. And so, so. It's kind of nostalgic. This was, of, this was one of the first episodes I've ever seen. So oh, wow. I don't hate this episode as much as other people. I feel like this is kind of like a guilty pleasure of mine. It's definitely not a great episode, but uh, this is more of a guilty pleasure material to me. Um, yeah. Just because the whole episode is absolutely insane. And time and time over again, you keep asking what is going on. And it just gets crazier and crazier. To the point where it's max crazy. Like, yeah, truth is definitely Square, crazy, all right. Tr truth or Square is just a hot, boiling pot of garbage that like does not have anything memorable. Like the patchy segments are just horrible. Yeah, I can't say the patchy segments are pretty bad. The patchy segments make the special, like make the special drag it down so far now. Like if it was just with the SpongeBob, like just the SpongeBob parts, it would be, eh, but it wouldn't be great. But the patching segments are just awful. Like Especially when they bring in those really, really forced in cameos. Yeah, like Will Ferrell, look at you. You got you kids, you know this guy, right? He was in um what, what movies was he in? Um, and Daddy's like, home. And, yeah. Daddy's home. You know the he was in um he was in Elf. Elf. Uh he was in Get Hard, you know that rated R movie. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh that kind of sounds like a really adult film that I- Yeah, okay, no, no, let's not think about that too much. Yeah. <laughs> but this is- Alright, main... so I will- I will say that uh -huh. Truth or Square was a really big deal when it came out, right? It was the 10th anniversary of Spongebob. Yep. It was really huge, especially for Nickelodeon, because, like, Spongebob, as we know, is, like, the Mickey Mouse of- of- of Nickelodeon. So- You wanna know, reason, you know what- you wanna know another reason why it's very big? Why? Why? Seal Green performed the theme song. He's in a pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob. Yes, that was before SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob. I will say, like the the theme song was actually pretty creative, like the stop motion they used. But like everything else in the episode, is the SpongeBob Christmas existed. Yeah. So this was this was a really big deal. This was like the first, I think, the first episode that they ever made in HD, I believe. Um. So like. Even before, like, the season 9 episodes and stuff like that. So, yeah, this was, like, this was special in terms of, like, which episodes came out that time. But the episode itself is nothing, is not, it's literally nothing. It's not special. It's not grand. It's just, like, another episode that they stretched out for an hour, or, yeah, for an hour instead of, like, 22 minutes or 11 minutes or whatever. So. Yeah. A little off topic. Um, uh, when I was little, I got the... Truth or Square video game. That was awful. That game was horrible. Ooh. It was worse than the episode. <laughs> oh, you, wow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we get ourselves stuck in an air duct, but it turns out there actually are, like, aliens in the air duct. We gotta take them down and follow that up by taking down some dancing starfish. And you, you like, know the, the funny thing is that this episode was written by Paul Tibbet, which is, like, 
Was it actually? I think so. I just hold on. Let me look up Truth or Square writers. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Tibbet, Luke Brookshire, Nate Cash, and uh, wow. Actually, I actually uh, got the wiki right here. Luke Brookshire, Nate Cash, Stephen Banks, and Paul Tibbet. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Like Paul Tibbet is like is such a gr like a great writer that surprisingly wrote this. Episode Honestly, I have to disagree. Paul Tibbet's written some really bad episodes, but in terms of like special, he was the the the. What's it called? The showrunner after Steven Hillenburg left. So yeah, well that's yeah. like that's what I was trying to get to. Yeah, you'd expect him to like be good, but like he he was in ch charge basically during during season four and five. So like yeah. So let's stop uh, rambling on. Let's just talk about the plot. What do you guys think of the plot about this uh, episode? Boring, just completely boring, bland. Yeah, it's very cookie cutter. It basically, it's celebrating the 11th and 7th anniversary of the Krusty Krab, and then eventually they get stuck in a freezer, and then they try to get out in the air duct, and then they get out, and then all the people that they were trying to satisfy leave, so they went on through all that for nothing. That's, a that's actually a line in the episode. Uh, uh, there's yeah, an like... Episode, uh, there's a song called A Day Like This, which was a, a good song. Yeah, I actually do like A Day Like That this. was one of the best I parts of the special, I think. Yeah. Um, and the old green. Don't forget the old green. And pink. Yeah. But and before pink. that, like the scene uh where he's like counting the clocks, it drags on for way too long. Yeah. Oh god. Actually it was more turning off the clocks. It was like in a big long line. It was like what why? Imagine Three Mr. Star is born pink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, if like judging from the title, like the title makes no sense at all. It's just a pun. Like, what does that even mean? Like, when you the think of fun- or there, There's no truth or dare. Or dare, except it yeah. has square in the title. Yeah, and like- it has square it, pants. Yeah. <laughs> like, in SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout, it's it's obvious what it's about, you know? It's in the title, it's a big grand episode. What does truth or square mean? <laughs> truth or dare? Well, they do go through some memories. Or... I, mean, I think I it would have been better if well, they yeah, actually but, like, did is it, is it memories or dreams? Well, this episode I don't even know. Dare, it's flashbacks, but instead of actually using clips from the show that are, is nostalgic and special, they make up new content that we've never seen before. Like, there's a... Uh... even add in... Like... Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. in a rock, <laughs> under the sea. Patrick Seastar! That was pretty creative, though. I kind of like those. No, honestly, it wasn't. It was Ooh, terrible. It was just it. stupid. I just got. I, honestly, there's only like one joke in the entire thing that I did actually get a laugh out of. Um. Yeah. No, but like, it's called Truth or Dare. It's called Straight Truth or Square. But then in the ear ducks, it's all like that. We get us. We get new footage of like Mr. Krabs' old Krabby Patty commercials before SpongeBob worked there, or was probably when Jim was still working there, or. Uh, we get some montage of Squidward sleeping on the job, but instead of using clips from, like, episodes where he is like that, they just make up a new footage that's not even funny at all. Like him sleeping in the sink, too. Like, yeah, that's a good way to drown yourself. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. Like, it just this episode, uh, they could some jokes could have worked, but they always have to drag them out to, like, bigger and bigger proportions. Yeah. Like, we gotta have Squidward sleeping at a station. We gotta have Squidward sleeping in the closet or on a table or in the sink and then in the bathroom. Just show yeah. one scene and we don't have to see all of it. Yeah, well, okay, if it was I funny, think... it would be funnier if they did more of it, but it's just stupid. You know, it's just yeah. there for nothing. So, they think, they think it's hopefully. Funny. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, what do you guys think of all the uh, the celebrity cameos? Hold on. I do have something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Something. I think. Ninja I, th I just have one quick thing to say. Only one cameo worked, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh. And who was that? I think it was the Trump the Insult comic book, that puppet thing. Yeah. CeeLo? Oh. CeeLo really doesn't count. He only just did the intro. He oh, really I, actually, I actually have something to uh, say. Yeah, go ahead. Um, If hopefully some of Air's uh, viewers yeah. get this reference, but I'm pretty sure that the movie Truth or Dare they got their inspiration from this episode. <laughs> what? Because what? it has it has a very similar name, and both of both the movie Truth or Dare and the episode Truth or Square are both very very terrible, and they make no sense, and they have very terrible comedy. Definitely. 
good analogy. It's pretty much gift wrapped. Uh, but yeah, the but well, the animation is really lazy here. Uh, to be honest, like they could have done better. I'm pretty sure most of the budget for this film just went towards uh, the celebrity cameos, you know, yeah, from definitely. from Ricky Gervais to Robin Williams, R.I.P. Uh, to Will Ferrell to Tina Fey. Wasted, wasted money. Yeah, they w wasted a lot of money. They could have spent that money on animation or comedy or writing, uh, so, but instead they just wasted you it. You know, a better episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If this was made, if this was. If Birthday Blowout and Truth to Square were switched, so Birthday Blowout came out in 2009, and then yep. <laughs> Truth to Square came out in 2019, how do you think they would change it? Uh, well, they would get better animation, for one. That's that's a given, because the, the season 11 has a much better animation. Although the expressions, I will admit, are a bit freaky. Um, the, the newer writers are pretty good, so they probably- It would actually be funny. Who, yeah. who, who would, who can't, what would, if they still had the cameos from celebrities, who do you think would? Well, no, Jojo uh, Siwa. well, for, yeah, well, Nickelodeon, I understand why they put celebrities, it's just so they can put them in the commercial and, uh, apply to the Smosh. lowest common denominator. Yeah, probably YouTubers, something like that. Yeah, Tessa Thompson get, and Chris Hemsworth. They probably get Jake what? Paul. <laughs> Men in Black International. Oh. Bring Jake Paul in there. I'm just clicking off the Put TV. Put T like, series. Oh. Put T series in there. Pie just appears. Yeah, they get T series. Get rice gum. Let's go. <laughs> no, Put they... air. Put no. air in the video. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be in, in the, the background just dancing. I just be dancing it's in the background. Yeah. And Zelda Brand James made a cameo in this one too. Miranda Cosgrove. Yeah, we had a uh... wait. Who was the f guy at the end of this uh, who got a cameo? The comedian guy. I forgot his name. Kevin Hart? Um, no. Um, Kevin Hart? No, no, no. Wait, no, I, sorry, the end of Big Birthday Blowout. There was a celebrity Kevin guy. Hart? No. Oh, wait. Oh, that's... David Hasselhoff? I don't remember. No, the comedian... Uh... Uh, oh, my God. Oh, no. wait, oh, Here, I'll search it up. Don't worry about it. You guys just keep talking. <laughs> Can we look it up after? Yeah, I'll it look It was Steven Hillenburg. What? <laughs> Steve Hillenburg? Is that what they call him? Um... I know. Uh, I honestly don't know. I don't remember. Actually, I do have to say something. I just, I just, like for oh, all. Oh, Gilbert, episodes... Gilbert Gottfried. Sorry, Gil Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. that guy. Yeah. I heard that guy. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, for all these like terrible episodes, like Truth the Square, like uh, I don't know, Pets or Pat, or like. Something like that. You just have to feel bad for the voice actors that they have to read those lines. Yeah. Cause I don't think they can like decline. Yeah. Like so they have to read those lines. Like it's either water or fire. I like how no, they but have like pets or pat. You have to feel bad for. <laughs> you have to feel bad for Bill. Um. Well, he can't really feel bad now. He's gotta be. He gotta feel bad about it at four. And then when you see their like actual acting and like uh birthday blowout. Yeah, it's it's creative. It's nice. Like say all those lines is actually it's actually kinda sad. Yeah, do you guys have any last thing to say about uh Truth or Square before we end? Um, Guilty well, pleasure uh, material. Just wasted. I money. just I'm not gonna watch that one ever again. I have, like... I've only watched Truth or Square once and I'm never gonna watch it again. I just do not- I refuse. Although I will constantly see- although if there is a clip of trying the insult comic dog insulting Patch of the Pirate, I'll watch that constantly because that's the only- Yeah, honestly, I'd like- I like that part. Oh yeah, let's talk about the patchy segments. The patchy segments were really... Eh. Awful. Yeah. I- I just- Well, it, for, honestly, Tom Kenny is like the best, uh, like, guilty pleasure ever, even in a good way. Like, he's awesome. And he did good as as Patchy, but the way they choreograph like the the moving and the the anime, it looks like it looks like Patchy's animated in some parts, like when he flies it's and he goes into the a whale, well. like when he's inside of a whale, that looks so weird and it's so stupid. Like, 
And like when he's with Robin And he's also a bit creepy too. I feel bad for Robin Williams, who was just used by like SpongeBob, like directly. Well, <laughs> just summed it up yeah. last one. It was like, oh my god, I know this place. It's where James go to die. <laughs> they probably game. they probably saw uh, Robin Williams in the street, took out a gun, and be like, put your hands up. You're in a Nickelodeon movie now. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> and he would and just be just... like, "Well, this is the same way that I got into other, my other roles, so why yeah. not?" Yeah, like that's he's how... doing his voice lines, and he's just like, "Say it." That's actually, it, I don't know if you guys know this. That's actually how Nickelodeon gets all their child actors. You ain't never had a friend like me. Or they just bribe uh... the parents. Yes, make <laughs> sure you have your talk off too. That's how they got all their child actors for sitcoms. Yeah. You ain't um, never had a friend like me. All right, let's move uh, on to yeah. the debatably the better, not debatably, the obviously the better uh, special of the two. SpongeBob's big birthday blowout. <laughs> now this is something that I can actually talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of truth or again, swear. shameless plug. But if you guys want to see my review, and same with Cargo, Cargo made a review on it. Just uh, I will I'll make link, a review. Uh, I'll soon. link them in the description. Uh, go check them out. Uh, for more uh thoughts on these uh. Or on the BBB. Anyway, what do you guys think of the Big Brother bot? Awesome. Okay, let's like let's take turns so we don't get too crowded. All right, um, cargo, you start. First with you, Air. <laughs> yeah. A quick review for Air. Yeah. Oh, for me. Oh, um, I think it's I think it's awesome, man. Uh, I already explained in my review. It's the animation's awesome. The live action parts, although being cringy in some parts, like the can of beans and the gorilla people. Uh, it's fun. Like, I'll say the second half is a lot, lot, lot better. The first half, if it was by itself, I would call it, like, a meh episode or a bad episode because it's really boring and, and kind of annoying at some parts. But the second half is where it picks up. You know, the live-action parts of the trusty slab are really timeless and awesome. Like, that's one of the best uh, scenes in SpongeBob, like, in my opinion. Uh, the actors do a great job, and yeah. Um, That's yeah, it. I thought Birthday Blah was one of the best specials I've ever seen from Spongebob Squarepants. Um, all the cameos, unlike Truth or Square, kind of worked. Some of them were funny, some of them were eh. But they still were way better than Truth or Square. Um, Patchy, uh, did better than Truth or Square. He didn't really do much. He got kind of annoying. But he, every, everything's just from Truth or Square is here. Just way, like, executed way better. All right, uh, Sam. Sam. Go ahead. On oh, my turn. Yes. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's like my favorite special of all time. It, it was, it, it was pretty good. I found some of it funny. The expressions were also pretty good. But I will admit there were like, a couple of times it did annoy me. Like again, that that bean thing. Like right? I don't know. It just would not stop. It was like constant noise over and over. And, like and people were getting covered in the stuff, and yet they were going, "Yay! I got covered in these beans." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, just a little weird for my taste, but the, the, most of the other stuff was also good to you. Live action stuff was also nice as well, and also just to see Sandy defeat Plankton by just stepping on his foot—that's it. Like, why couldn't Sandy have done that in previous episodes? Like, I really, I, it would have been a lot funnier in animation, maybe. Honestly, they do, they do that like in every episode, <laughs> so so it wasn't really too original there. But anyway. Um, they did have some callbacks to previous episodes, so like, like again, like when Squidward goes, like, "Do you have some place else to be a net with?" And Patrick says, "No, no. to four. It, yeah, actually, that was a pretty good callback. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty decent episode. Not my favorite special in the entire show, but yeah, it was pretty fun for what it was. Hundred percent, Ninja. All right. Um, for me. I say this is probably like mid tier for specials, um, maybe top ten, uh, but maybe like number eight or uh, nine, somewhere around there. Um, I did love a lot of parts. I loved when uh, all the voice actors in real life just like did like that little scene. That was probably my favorite part. Uh, I loved the song at the end of the episode. Um, a lot of the jokes did land, but there are three major flaws that I do have with the uh, special. Three? I have three, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, okay, so first is um, when Patchy meets uh, SpongeBob finally, because 
first off, it just looked creepy. Because when they're singing the song, they cut to a uh, part where uh, it's Patchy's body and then Potty's head. And that actually, like, freaked me out. And um, also, if you, Patchy is, like, Spongebob's biggest fan. And he literally writes that on the, uh, on the present. And then he opens it up and he acts, like, so calm. Like, like if you meet biggest your biggest idol, fan, like if you meet your biggest fan, you're gonna be a lot more excited than oh hey SpongeBob, I've been waiting to meet you my entire life. Happy birthday, Sponge. Um, yeah. and then another part was uh the bean part. Uh, I hated that part. It just made no sense in the green screen when uh Kenan Thompson was coming out of the can. That was pretty that was, bad. That was Kenan Thompson. I think. I think so. Wow. Uh, or Kel Mitchell, one of the other. Yeah. It was yeah. somebody from King and Kel. But, uh, and then the last thing is, and uh, I was talking about this with uh, Rashawn SVSP, plug. Um, <laughs> I hated, or I didn't hate, but I just didn't like how they utilized Plankton in the episode. <laughs> No, I because... I honestly disagree a lot with that. Sorry to interrupt you, but like I think that mm -hmm. Plankton was if if they made another segment in the episode where he tries to take the formula, I would just groan because like they've done that so many times, and I think just not doing anything with him in this in this plot was good, and they just made him maniacal, and he made Fred say my leg, which is pretty funny. But anyway. no, but like he's there to celebrate SpongeBob's birthday. Cause he literally, he's literally there to like actually like celebrate. Cause he's part of like the surprise, and they, they literally, he literally makes a chair with nails all over the place and like skulls and stuff like that. And I'm just like, if you're gonna celebrate SpongeBob's birthday, why are you trying to murder him? SpongeBob because so he, did, and he did boil his plans for years. So. That was probably so for uh, to get the formula. So it's easier to get the formula. That was probably and for. That was probably for this the strangler. <laughs> also, I have mixed feelings about uh, the um, the old man in the episode. You mean old man Jenkins? <laughs> was that old man horrible. Jenkins? Good old man Jenkins. I don't know. They they just shoved him off. Like I know they like they like. Put him on. <laughs> they put him on, and then just shoved him off, and he exploded. <laughs> I did like that joke with Patrick, though. Like, how many gallons? But I did like how uh, a lot of I did like Patrick in this episode. Uh, he seemed a lot more smarter than he usually is. Um, I liked uh a lot of the uh uh the words that they used instead of like a like frisbee. They just used like flying pie. Yeah, no. I, I felt like that was copyrighted. That's why they didn't use it. Maybe. And, um... Also, the ending with uh, all of them sleeping and Spongebob giving that speech. Uh, the first time I didn't like it, but then I rewatched it, and I was just like, this is just classic Spongebob, honestly. Yeah. And then the ending where Spongebob almost announces his age, that leaves a lot of theories, and so, overall, I give it maybe like a B. Yeah. Or B plus. Nice. So like an eighty eight, maybe. Nice for B. Yeah, like a nine like an eighty nine or ninety. Well ninety would be like an A plus, so you're saying like a high B or just a low A. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So what would you guys rate this and episode out of ten? Um nine. I gave it a nine. Uh, I'd say like an eight point eight, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, around like 8.5 or 8. Yeah, I originally rated it 8 in my video, but I watched it once more with my parents, because when you watch stuff with your parents, you realize, like, the, the flaws in stuff, like, especially in children's cartoons, because they, they, they tell you how immature it is all the time. So, like, watching it over, I have to say, it's more of like an 8 or an 8.5 than a 9. Um... But yeah. No, also because like sometimes uh sorry parents if you watch Air's channel. Uh but sometimes they <laughs> sometimes they do kind of ruin uh some stuff. Some Who's movies this guy? Or shows that you watch. Yeah. Who's this guy? Who's that? And it's like 
That's SpongeBob. And who's that? That's yeah, Plankton. Yeah, but and who's something that? else. That's, that's, something no, else that's... They'll, just, they'll laugh at the corniest jokes. Something else that's oh. worth mentioning is they don't know all the the nerdy stuff. Like, when we watch Big Birthday Blowout, we gush over, like, all the characters coming back, you know, the voice actors, yeah, like, them going to the surface. Yeah, we, we gush over that stuff, but they just look at it as, as an episode, so they don't really care. They just, you know, comment on the episode, so... That kind of probably also, makes them have a worse experience. I just want to add one more thing. Yeah. Uh, to what I was saying, uh, some of the animation in the episode it did kind of feel like season six through eight. Yeah. Like when they don't like when they're running out of water. I, I kind of disagree. I thought the animation was very great. I know. The, no, the I, most, I, I, I'm in most the animation was great. Most of the animation was great, but that scene where they were running out of water. Yeah. It was either it was either a callback to uh, the SpongeBob movie when they ran out of water. Yeah. I don't know. I, I maybe think, it was. But... I think when the animation was there, it was great, especially the uh, the the live action parts. But in some scenes, you can you can tell there's puppets inside the the aquarium thing that they use the the yeah. set. Yeah. Uh, and then after the the puppets, so just so they know where it is, and then they animate over that. In some scenes, I don't know if this if it's due like budget restraints or whatever, but they didn't animate over that, so you can see the puppets inside the thing that they used, like when I, they're leaving the. We only had one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I did. I did see it like a couple times. Yeah, I wonder we only what the had budget for this was. Yeah, what's the budget for this? Is it actually a hundred thousand? I know. Most of these, most I actually want to see the budget. Take, most episodes take millions of dollars. Like I, I heard a Family Guy episode takes like a million dollars to make. Yeah. Yeah, they make those characters as stiff as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Just their mouths just move open and open and close, open and close. Yeah, I guess then when they just this, make, make I guess one moment like you know, hands on hip and hands out and crossed arms, you know. Yeah. I don't like. Yeah, I guess when the um, I guess when the what's it called when the a special's been out for a long time. The budget will come out eventually, so we can see what it was. Anyway, like we're thank you so much for joining me, guys. So let's just do some last-minute comparisons between True the Square and uh, Big Birthday Blowout. Uh, okay, all some... right. Here's a good question. Yeah, go all, ahead. Okay, all in favor who think that Birthday Blowout is much better than True the Square, say aye. 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 Uh, no, de no debate on that one. <laughs> yeah, I just have a uh, a uh, quick thing uh, for everyone here and for people viewing this video. Um, yeah. There was speculation at the end of the episode. How old do you actually think SpongeBob is? Well, like by his license, I think I don't remember. I think it's thirty nine. I think it said at one point in like in one episode it was like nineteen eighty something like that. No, it was, it was like nineteen. It was nineteen eighty six in the in the thing, so he's thirty three. But, but I don't what really year, listen. I don't really listen would it to be that. In SpongeBob's world. Exactly. Uh, no, I think. Sponge years. I, don't... I, I always oh, speculated that, that, but after watching you know Mr. Enter's recent uh, Camp Coral review thing, he says why won't we be reviewing it. He actually did a great job breaking that down. Like, Spongebob's in boating school, he's getting a license, and he also has a job at a fast food place. This is, like, the life of a 16-year-old. So, he's probably 16 or 17, like, in a, in a teenager True. years. Yeah, because one, one of my cousins has a job at a fast food restaurant. Yeah. And he's also taking his, well, car license. <laughs> yeah. So, with his learner's permit. All right. Thank you for joining me, guys. I really appreciate it. Problem? No. Uh, uh, again, I'll link to all their channels along with some other reviews and stuff in the description below, so definitely check those out if you're still here. Uh, and, yeah, thank you all for watching. Any last words, guys? I like Harry Potter. Um, Sponge SpongeBob is good. Gorilla who beat me up last night also decided to put me over a roast. He wanted to cook me. He wanted to eat me whole. But luckily, I was able to escape thanks to a snail. And in the one word he only told me was, Meow. <laughs> it was the gorilla from the Gorilla Club episode of Victorious. Is he related to Harambe? Yes. It was, Donkey Kong. <laughs> it was Donkey Kong. 
It's the gorilla from that uh, one SpongeBob episode. All right, the one person who realized, hey, I'm under, I'm underwater. What am I doing here? With this horse. Okay. This is a zebra. Thank you all I for watching. This is. Yeah, we're gonna get two taken some... away. These are three very interesting people that I'm doing this with. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I really hope <laughs> you enjoyed. You. Thanks to you three again for joining me. And, uh, yeah. Cooler Square will always be the worst episode of SpongeBob. <clears throat> Have a good day. Ciao. Good night, everybody.